Dozens of families are on edge tonight. That's why we all wait for another round of heavy rain. Coming up, we're going to a neighborhood hit hard by the 2010 floods to see how they're dealing with floodwaters tonight. Meanwhile, roads look more like rivers. The dangers facing owners right now. News 4 at 5 starts right now. News 4 at 5, live with a forewarn weather alert. Here's the creek on Gillespie Lane where the creek uh, crosses the road. The road is definitely impassable. Just one example of what we're enduring today after heavy rains. This is in Murray County, where water is consuming roads, shutting them down. Right now, high water is the most common site in areas just like this one. This is water nearly reaching the top of a bridge in Manchester. It's only the first round of rain this week, and already folks have been rescued. This is the aftermath of a driver getting stuck off Cobertson Road in Antioch. Well, they just went through deep water. The, the, this road here floods every time it rains hard. It'll flood here, and it will also flood it on, on Bluff Road. Now, folks, this is the reality for a lot of homeowners today. Their yards looking more like rivers and lakes. This is what it looked like in front of a home near Old Nashville Highway. A lot of the flooding we're seeing is due to nearby creeks overflowing into neighborhoods. Several roads are closed in Rutherford County as well. This is along Christiana Fosterville Road right here. News 4 crews saw cars make the right choice in this case and turn around instead of driving through that pooling water. Now keep in mind the system is ever changing and the water there is likely even higher right now. Right now, our News 4 crews are placed strategically across Middle Tennessee. They are talking with neighbors and monitoring the flooding causing problems right now. In fact, crews are set up in Bellevue at the Harpeth River. In Murfreesboro, residents are seeing flooding around their homes. Crews are also in Laverne with significant flooding in yards and also in Antioch where water has made its way inside homes. The Harpeth River is rising, making people who were here nine years ago quite apprehensive. Bellevue was one of the hardest hit communities in the 2010 flood. News Force Rebecca Cardenas live at the Harpeth River for us tonight. Rebecca, that river nearing flood stage. Yeah, it's only about four feet away, Tom and Tracy. Right now, this river at 16 feet. It floods at 20 feet. Probably not hard to believe. This water already coming out of the banks of this river, a very significant distance. A lot of these trees almost entirely submerged. And just to give you an idea, the water when we got here three hours ago was all the way back there, and now it has reached where I'm standing. So it has certainly moved a significant amount in just a short amount of time. Probably understandable why some of the residents here are nervous, though. A man born and raised on Highway 10 calls it unnerving the forecast. He says the fact that we haven't even hit peak rainy season yet is nerve wracking. It happened really fast. It came out of nowhere. It felt like three days of rain, which is what this feels like. To see how much rain this storm brings in the next one. And uh, I think it's in pretty good shape right now. Now, as you just heard there, not everyone is terribly nervous about all this rain that's coming just yet, but we did see several people here along the river this morning on this trail checking on the Harpeth River just to see how it's doing. We, of course, will be monitoring it closely for you, so stick with us here on News 4. Tom, Tracy? Rebecca Cardin is live for us tonight. Rebecca, thanks. Many viewers like you are sending us pictures and videos of what your neighborhoods look like right now. Let's take a look at what some of these yards look like in Rutherford County. Man, look at that. You can see front yards covered in water. City Fire, Rescue and Police Departments are urging everyone to keep your guard up. It might not be raining all that hard right now, but flooding is still a big problem and concern. The Nashville Emergency Operations Center tweeted out a list of road closures you're going to need to know about, along with the hashtag turn around, don't drown. And right now, our 41 weather team tracking the next round of rain headed our way. They've been very busy. Let's turn things over to Dan and Lisa in the 41 Weather Center. Well, we are keeping a close eye on what's going on. We've got a few showers left out there right now that we'll watch. But the ground is soaked as the next round of rain moves in late tomorrow. Likely, we'll get into some flooding again first thing Friday morning. And here's what we're seeing right now as we look a little farther off to the north. We are seeing some showers here. And we've got just this tight little ribbon right through here that's going to be working on to the east and headed into the Nashville area. And then as we look into Gainesboro, we're seeing some showers there over to Lafayette. All this is moving towards the east. Monterey seeing a few showers there. 
and another little batch right there in Murray County moving across 65. And then some of that heavier rain is over in the Cookville area moving on out. But right here around Spring Hill, you've seen some of those showers and folks traveling down the interstate also seeing a bit of that. Now, as far as how much rain we have already had, it's been around one to two inches of rain in some spots, a little bit more down to the south. But you can see there's one popping up at two inches, near two inches here and over to the east. But that just shows you how much that saturating ground, saturated ground really impacts our potential for flooding. And that's why we still have some river flood warnings that are in effect. The Tennessee, also the Duck River, the Shoal River remain under those warnings, as well as the Buffalo River. Dan? All right, Lisa, what we're seeing over the next several hours is that rain chance really coming down. This is for Nashville, so it's a little higher than that in eastern middle Tennessee, but 30%, 7 o'clock, 20%, 9, and then whittling down to 10 or even zero first thing tomorrow morning. So this wave of rain, round one is almost done. A couple of drips and dribbles here and there, and maybe an additional tenth of an inch over toward the Cumberland Plateau. But here's the weather setup late tomorrow night and early Friday morning, very heavy downpours moving back in with yet another warm front and that means downpours and thunderstorms and several more inches of rain still to come right through the end of the weekend. And we'll have more on the timing of this next round coming up. Okay, we will see you soon. We want to put our eyes on the roads right now. Our evening commute here at 505. This is a live look at I-40 at Fessler's Lane. You can see it's pretty heavy heading home this evening, but hey, it's moving in both directions right now. Glad to see no accident, at least in that video. Uh, before we go any further, make sure you have our forewarned weather app downloaded on your phone. You're going to get important weather alerts directly in the palm of your hand. You'll also find our seven-day forecast in the school closings, and you'll know the minute weather has moved out of the area. That's important. Crews are telling Rutherford County residents tonight to be careful out there. Nearly 20 roads in the area shut down today while schools let out two hours early. That is where we find news for us for Sanders. For us, what's it looking like right now where you are? Past. And now this whole area is taped off and sheriff's officials have been telling people to just turn around. You can see why there are deep areas like this all the way down to Shacklett Road, which is about a half mile away. Now, a neighbor told us these water levels are a problem for getting out of driveways, but this isn't anywhere close to the levels of the May 2010 flood. And at least the water isn't close to any houses through here. Now, the road closures are all over Rutherford County. These streets in the city of Murfreesboro will be closed overnight. Malloy Lane, Armstrong Valley, and Cherry Lane. And we do have to caution people that we have been to some areas out here that have been completely taped off. But then cars will come and plow right through that tape. So there are spots that are supposed to be taped off, but do not have that tape because those people just went right through it. Tom and Tracy. Sanders, for Sanders, thank you very much for that live report. For a homeowner in Antioch, his stress level goes up as the chance for heavy rain goes up. Alan Frio in Antioch tonight. Alan, we know this is quite nerve wracking for him. Yeah, this is really uh, something very difficult to deal with. James McCoy, who uh, lives in this Antioch uh, neighborhood, has been dealing with flooding issues for years now. Now, take a walk with me and you'll see what the neighborhood is like. It's uh, pretty highly elevated. It does not sit on a floodplain at all. So these people here should not be dealing with uh, flooding issues at all, but they do. So here's what happens at this point. Water has to go somewhere. So gravity takes over on its way down the hill. The water ponds right at James McCoy's house for days now. McCoy has been holding his breath with downpours on the way. As the chances of rain increased, so did the anxiety level as well. Uh, we paid attention to that, of course, three days out. If it was going to be a, a 60, a 70, 80 percent chance of rain, we uh, became very anxious. Yeah, good reason to be anxious too. Take a look at where all that water begins to build up inside concrete blocks in McCoy's basement. Workers today drilled holes in the blocks to drain it all. We could not believe the water that was coming out of that small hole in that basement. 
Now, it's that hidden water that can cause all sorts of foundational problems, and that's why McCoy spent $8,500 to get a perimeter drainage area, and it also has a sump pump that kind of whisks all of that water away. He had to invest in it, and this way, when uh, you know everybody's calling for uh, showers and thunder showers and really heavy downpours, he doesn't have to hold his breath from here on in.